Okay, so uh, the update arrived in all servers. Was it today? Yesterday, I guess, depending on when you're watching this. And in Korea, they actually received a pretty decent balance patch. So, as you know, whatever happens there will come to global and NA eventually. So, we're gonna check uh, what changes happen to both summoners and monsters, and we'll see how maybe the meta will change or which units will become a little better, yeah? Let's look into that. So for the first few, uh, I already covered this in one of the previous notes. Uh, there is a new effect called suppression, which will be available on some of the units right now. And basically, whenever uh, they receive skill cooldown reduction, uh, and only a few units have that skill cooldown reduction, so don't get too crazy excited about it. Uh, basically, they will be, it seems like, losing HP and uh, increasing their skill cooldown on top of that. And for the rune sets, uh, the shield set will be buffed from 200 to 250 attack, and the swift set will be buffed from 25 to 35 increased movement speed, or rather attack speed. A few buffs to Orbia. It looks like they're really trying to buff up uh, that secondary level 70 skill. Basically, Meteor Strike is the first alternative skill for uh, Fire Orbia and Tornado is the first alternative skill for Wind Orbia. So the activation conditions of both skills are being decreased a bit. It looks like this time you only need burn level 2 instead of burn level 3 to guarantee that stun. And for the Wind one, uh, you will only need 2 harmful effects instead of 3 harmful effects to ignore uh, the target's defense but then again uh, for the fire i can see it being used but for the wind one uh the original wind skill just counters cleaves and other units would endure way too well so i have a really hard time seeing this being used too much but yeah we'll see how it goes maybe against non-cleaves that could be a decent option oh and of course uh, the cooldown of this is getting buffed by two seconds instead of 10 it will go down to eight okay i mean this is a very wonky translation but this is basically the dark panda warrior or whatever it's called panda knight panda warrior panda warrior yeah uh, it looks like on top of his current basic attack, which keep in mind already removes all beneficial effects, yes, a basic attack. In addition, each hit has a certain chance to decrease defense. Uh, why? <laughs> Wait, so he will have a full strip and a defense break on his basic attack. That's of course only if he attacks with his HP above uh, 50 percent it looks like no actually it works below it's just that whenever his hp is above it's a lower chance uh, so when his hp is below 50 percent he has a 40 percent chance to use that skill and uh, when his hp is above 50 percent he has a 20 percent chance to use that skill. so basically the lower his hp the higher the chance will be to use the skill but Full strip and a defense break on a basic attack. I am worried. Uh, yeah, that that just sounds OP. And he that's not they're not done. Uh, we're changing more. Okay, so his second skill is very similar to the basic attack, other than uh, just the multipliers are a bit higher. It also has a chance to proc into uh, the follow-up attack, but in this case, uh, he also has a small chance. Of course, he's getting the defense break added. On top of that, he is getting a defense break increase. So basically, if you have first level of defense reduction, yeah, for 10 seconds additional. Oh, so 10 second defense break on top of that. Oh boy. Okay, the dark hell lady. Um, oh yeah, yeah. This is gonna be a brutally broken unit. So. Her first skill, uh, it had a double hit and it was able to defense break on top of that. It's an AoE, keep in mind. Now it's getting changed to a more expensive and longer cooldown. However, on top of being able to defense break, she also steals a buff for each hit. So essentially she can either steal two buffs, she can uh, do a buff steal into a defense break and that is AoE, keep in mind. So. Uh, this completely kind of destroys any immunity set that will come from those new accessories. Uh, I am very scared to fight this unit and we just started. Uh, there is more buffs to her. 
Her second skill, previously, whenever she used the skill, uh, she summoned these weird minions. Uh, basically, they're like undead uh, monsters that previously died, and they weren't really good. So now, uh, they're being changed a bit. So for her second skill, uh, on top of being able to do quite a bit of damage, uh, she will also be able to attack break uh, with her skills. And keep in mind, this no longer has uh, the condition of uh, needing a reduced defense, so even if you don't have a defense break, she will be able to attack break your opponents, uh, essentially shutting down their damage by quite a bit. And the vampire effect, you wanna call it, lifesteal, uh, however you like to mention it, is getting buffed from 30% to 50%, so even more healing, although it's hard to say how much damage she will be doing. Uh, Though she is getting sort of a uh, oracle treatment where her damage is getting shifted a bit away from attack power more towards her own HP so you're able to build a tanky cracker and still do decent damage. And then her passive, oh boy. So previously uh, she summoned these weird minions, uh, now they keep the minions, uh, those are still uh, alive and there. But the passive is getting changed from an 80 second to a 2 minute one. However, she is also able to self revive herself with 80% HP. And whenever she self revives, she is also able to automatically revive up to 3 other units. Yes, 3 other units. So essentially, uh, if you do kill her last, she will do a completely full revive. Uh, whether it's in Siege or in, uh, what's it called, Arena, Battlefield, whatever. So yeah, uh, you can't leave her last, but if you leave her first, she will also self-revive with 80% HP. So yeah, uh, pretty much the only way to counter her is to uh, use a anti-revive unit. Otherwise, you're pretty much not gonna win the battle, you're never killing them, unless you outpower your opponent a lot. So yeah, uh, that is pretty brutal. And of course her ult is getting a similar treatment to her second skill, so uh, damage scales a bit more with HP. Uh, vamp effect is gonna be buffed from 30 to 50. Of course, steals a buff and uh, decreases attack even if you do not have uh, a defense break on top of it. So yeah, uh, I really don't wanna see this unit going live as I'm very scared of what's gonna happen. Uh, this, this looks... Truly brutal. Okay, the light vampire hunter is getting a slight buff, so his first skill uh, will now be a little bit cheaper, and the skill is basically a silence effect, damage taken down while attacking, yeah. And actually it procs into his second skill, so basically you're able to spam this a little bit more often, and while you spam this, your second skill will be spammed a little bit more often as well. And a silence is a CC effect, which is gonna be important uh, when we read his passive. So basically, he's able to keep up that silence a bit more often. And his passive previously, if uh, an enemy had a CC effect, he did additional two damage uh, to the opponent, and it was fixed damage, meaning that it cannot be uh, reduced by any like damage reduction, defense buffs, anything like that. It's just true damage, whatever number it is. Uh, that's the damage it receives. Uh, the damage overall is getting a bit lower, however, uh, it no longer requires a CC effect to activate, so it's a huge buff overall. It's now a 65% scaling, but if the enemy still has a CC effect, that damage will be doubled to, what's that, around 131%. So, really good buff overall, I mean, uh, even if you do not have a silence or any other CC effect, his damage is still increased by quite a bit. A very small, oh, I, I don't even know whether you can call it a buff or a nerf actually, because basically the light pirate will now grant invincibility whenever he applies uh, the block beneficial effects, but previously it was based on attack and defense break. The problem with that is for block beneficial effects, uh, he's able to get it from this skill, However, uh, for attack and defense break, you were able to pretty easily uh, get it from other units. So, if you do have him, uh, do decide whether that's a buff or a nerf for you. It's quite a change, I would say. Uh, 
it's hard to say whether it's gonna be a buff or a nerf. It's for sure gonna be a bit more easily available from this skill at least, because the chance to land the uh, block beneficial effect is pretty high. And if you spam this manually on 3 mana, which will degen every 9 seconds, you are able to keep the invincibility up for like 90% of that time. So it could be decent for activating from this skill, but it lowers the chance of activating from other sources. If you have other sources of defense break, dark break, all of that. Fire Mermaid's heal uh, skill is being changed a bit, so she will recover a bit less HP. However, the cooldown and cost of that is getting lowered, so overall it will be a slightly increased heal, whether you spam it manually or on cooldown. So a good change overall. The Wind Mermaid's first skill, Air Shield, is getting buffed by quite a bit. I'm actually really interested to see how this plays out as it does counter most of the common uh, effects or harmful effects that you can encounter. So previously you got a shield for 16.5% of your HP and it removed a defense break. Now the shield is buffed up to 22% and it lasts almost double the duration. On top of that, if an ally has a defense break or attack break, uh, those will be replaced with defense buff and attack buff. So potentially it could be a really good counter to a lot of uh, like frontline debuffing teams, I suppose. I mean, it's complete counter to the light guy, which actually applies attack buff, uh, attack break and defense break. But yeah. Uh, this should be interesting in Arena, especially where uh, if your frontline unit receives some of these, especially defense break, you're able to buff up a defense buff to him on top of having a shield. I mean, if you are able to make that work in regular challenge Arena, that will just make an unkillable frontline. However, she is a wind unit and uh, she might suffer a bit against Junos and all of those strips that she will do against uh, all of these beneficial effects. Okay, Fire Sky Dancer. So her first skill heal will have a little bit of a higher scaling with attack, so you can expect more there. And her second skill, as well as her ultimate, which is very similar, will now have the new effect Suppression, uh, which essentially means that whenever you increase a uh, cooldown on an enemy, he will be taking damage on top of that. Now the problem with that is a Fire Sky Dancer is mostly sort of a PvE unit. Uh, she has attack buff, she has defense break, but she also has attack scaling, which means uh, she does become pretty squishy if you want those heals to be high. Hard to say whether this will put any use uh, into PvP. I mean, suppression is cool, but again, it's a harmful effect and uh, it can be pretty easily cleansed. And as a harmful effect, even then, uh, I mean, it's cool and all, but there are only a few units that can make use of that cooldown reduction effect, I would say. So, yeah, I don't think uh, the Fire Sky Dancer will see too much play, however, I will be surprised if she does. And uh, we may even test her out if I do get her by the time uh, this update comes live. Wind Sky Dancer buff, uh, so it looks like this is her second skill, the HP balancing one. I assume the change is only for auto mode, basically if your unit is low or if she is low, uh, the auto AI basically will have a higher chance of using it instead of the uh, first skill. Dark Sky Dancer, similar to the uh, fire one, is also getting a little bit of an increased uh, healing based on her attack. So from 443 to 532, that's like a 20% increase overall, so not bad at all. Fire Undyne is getting a small buff to her first skill. So previously it was a pull as well as a heal block for 20 seconds. Now on top of that she is getting a strip for one beneficial effect. Uh, this is an AoE attack, so in theory uh, you will be able to strip, get a small CC effect bringing everyone towards you and inflicting that heal block for 20 seconds, but then again I don't think this will be enough. Uh, especially since she is a fire unit, she will miss a lot as the meta is very very water heavy right now. So yeah, I don't think this 
at least in PvP, will be too impactful. What I want similar to the uh, fire one is also getting a strip on her first skill. Uh, and that already had a blind and increased evasion on top of it. Then, on top of that, she also gets a healing of 22.6% of her HP to the enemy or to the ally with the lowest HP. Again, it's a 4 mana skill, I don't think it will be anything amazing really. I mean, it should be a decent counter to all of the immunity sets that are coming from the new hero raids. But, uh, hmm. it could be, it could be, you know what? If it allows you to apply blind on top of being able to strip, not as in like stripping and because it had immunity you are no longer able to apply debuffs. If you're able to strip and apply debuffs on top of that, I could see it being decent to counter a lot of stuff like Thessalians, Sharon, right? Because uh, first of all you're enabling your own units to hit them more by decreasing their evasion. And uh, you're applying blind which will basically make them miss their attacks a lot. So. It could be decent for countering archers, but uh, it's very hard to say how much impact it will have in the current meta as well. And Wind Undyne as well is going back to its roots. So previously it had a 3 mana skill, which was sort of the ultimate counter to Galleon, because if uh, the Galleon did a defense break, she was able to decrease it and put up immunity. Now that Galleon's uh, second skill is on 4 mana, she no longer really needs that, so they are changing her, her skill overall. It's gonna be a 5 mana cost, so very similar to Wusa, and instead of removing defense break, she will now remove any debuff, but only one, and on top of that she will also give a little bit of healing and immunity for 14 seconds. So very, again, very similar to Wusa. It's also a 5 mana, uh, what do you call it, 5 mana skill, but uh, while Busa has a shield, she will have a heal, so sort of very similar use I suppose, uh, Busa is more of a safer option to increase your uh, total HP in the first place I would say, uh, because shield is sort of like a reverse healing, right, it gives you sort of this additional uh, shield on top while hers is uh, more of a fulfilling your HP, but then again, if uh, your team members are not losing that much HP, uh, shield will have more value overall, so it's just another option uh, to Wusa, I suppose, and if uh, a Wusa gets picked, for example, you're able to pick up a Wind Undyne yourself, and very similar to the ultimate, so she removes two debuffs, uh, she applies immunity for 14 seconds and a little bit of higher healing as well. Aha, uh -huh, I called it, Wind Valkyrie. So uh, she is getting buffed to receive invincibility from uh, requiring level 7 to level 4. I predicted it would be level 6 so she could get it from uh, using this skill 2 times. But level 4 is even better and very curious to see how she will perform now. Overall... Uh, I mean, she's also getting this uh, a little additional effect of reducing cooldown of her second skill, uh, the actual ignore defense nuke. I don't know how much that will play out, I usually try to use her as a soloing unit, so it might not impact it much. But yeah, you're able to get invincibility with two self buffs, or even a self buff plus any additional level 1 attack buff, so Kind of curious how that will play out, uh, looks like now they're trying to push you away from using invincibility units like Chloe or even a Light Cleave, I know someone mentioned uh, using Light Cleave uh, would be an option with her as well, uh, to using just straight up uh, additional attack buffs, and keep in mind she is invincible permanently while uh, she has a level 4 or up so that could potentially be very scary, permanent invincibility somehow, I'll try to see if I'm able to sort of make a team on that and I'll definitely test it out once uh, the patches come to uh, NA as well. Okay, the Wind Ninetales Fox, so her first skill is getting a small buff of upping the Fox, uh, fox Fire, what's it called in English, uh, Phantom Light, basically that unremovable effect. 
I don't know how much impact this will have because her second skill still requires level 5 or up, so it's essentially just a small damage buff. I mean, uh, for each Phantom Light she has, uh, she will increase the damage of her second skill by 5%, so essentially that could be a 10% boost to her uh, second skill damage, but I don't think that's gonna be too great. However, her passive... Uh, previously, whenever she attacked, she had a 22% chance to uh, remove immunity, now that's getting buffed to 50%, and keep in mind this, uh, this applies to basic attacks as well, so every time she attacks, she will have a 50% chance to remove immunity, so potentially if you build her on a lot of attack speed, she will be able to do a lot of stripping, and your frontline will pretty much not be able to have that uh, immunity. And with uh, the new unit Chao, the Water Dragonite that's been released, she is also able to combo it pretty well now. I saw someone in uh, my previous uh, Chao video mention in the comments that she and Chao could be a potentially good combo. Uh, with the small immunity chance, it was a bit uh, hard to predict, but with this, uh, there is a very good chance that she will be super OP, because 50% chance to strip on every attack. On top of that, when the enemy has a frostbite, she will also be doing bonus hits, attribute advantage attacks, and defense breaks. So, uh, the frontline unit that the enemy has, if you have both a rank and a chow, will be able to receive a lot of strips, a lot of defense breaks, and a lot of damage. So, ooh. It could be an interesting combo if you have both of them. If you only have her, I feel like uh, this buff should still be decent, but definitely not as impactful as it would be with a Frostbite unit. Water Magic Knight, defense break being buffed from 60 to 75, this is really nothing. Uh, but they also can't over buff her because she is a free unit. You get her after like day 7, uh, whenever you start the game, so... It's quite normal that uh, she will probably never be sort of like a very OP PvP unit, mostly uh, gonna be focused on PvE, uh, would be my guess. Okay, Dark Magic Knight, so her first skill is getting buffed from just doing random hits and applying defense break to also having a little bit of lifesteal as well as damage increase, so all of the damage she does, she will basically heal for 50% of that. And if attacking a restrained enemy, I'm guessing this means a CC effect, the translation is a bit wonky, uh, the damage will increase by 25% as well. And similar to the Water Magic Knight, the defense break chance is getting upped a bit as well. So while her first skill wasn't too amazing, uh, look at how well it combos into the second skill. So. Whenever the second skill is used, first of all, uh, instead of removing one beneficial effect, it now removes all of them. And keep in mind that uh, this is an AoE attack, so it's uh, pretty similar to what Chivu, Tiana. Uh, on top of that, uh, whenever she lands a root, uh, she will use her first skill automatically, meaning that you are able to remove all buffs root them in place and on top of that defense break everyone with just a single uh, skill and also if uh, the root is successful it looks like the pull uh, it's called pull it's root really right oh no actually pull 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 okay so the pull uh basically bringing everyone towards you sort of thing or everyone towards the middle of uh, where the skill is being used uh that will be irresistible, I mean, you will still want accuracy on her, so I'm not sure how impactful this will be. It will simply ignore the resistance check, so there's no 15% chance of being resisted regardless of accuracy, but uh, this part isn't really the main part. Uh, this is really scary though. Removing all buffs, uh, root, and on top of that, using first skill if uh, the enemies are rooted, and ultimate is very similar to that, uh, removing all of the buffs, uh, using uh, that first skill if you apply a root, all of that. So yeah, another very scary light and dark unit coming alive. And it wouldn't be a balanced patch without throwing a very weird change to an L4 unit, right? 
So a uh, the Dark Vagabond is getting a few buffs. Uh, they're quite weird and it looks like they're mostly targeted at siege defenses and especially those nat 4 or below towers. So uh, first of all, his second skill, the Provoke, it's only a 2 mana Provoke, however it is a single target Provoke, so don't go crazy thinking that you're able to Provoke the whole team with it. Uh, now it will give himself a death buff, so basically being able to sustain a bit more, and since this defense buff is for 16 seconds, and the skill is on 14 seconds, you are able to permanently keep it even when outside of a soul link. And his passive, uh, this is quite an interesting change, it's sort of mostly targeted at uh, Konamiya, Tion, uh, the Water Elemental Pudian, uh, all of that jazz. Uh, I mean, you can kind of think about it with uh, Eleanor as well, but I mean, what's the chance you'll bring a Dark Vagabond into Brawl, right? So yeah, uh, whenever an enemy uh, receives a school, uh, skill cooldown up uh, effect, so basically any uh, skill boosting like Galleon, Konamiya, Tion, again, uh, whatever uh, decreases the cooldown, uh, that already gets reduced, don't forget, from him. Uh, those will only be 20% effectiveness, so for Konamiya that 35 will become only like 7%. On top of that, whenever a, a skill like that is used, uh, the ultimate gauge of the enemy is reduced by 30%. So potentially, uh, this guy will be sort of god tier uh, whenever fighting siege defenses against units with Konami or Theon. So I do recommend building him when uh, the buffs come out. It should be a very decent counter to one of the siege defenses, especially the Nat 4 ones. And also whenever he gets attacked, he will receive a critical resistance uh, buff with a small uh, chance. So I would say a defense, uh, or rather a decent uh, buff overall, however nothing too super game breaking. Just another option to bring into uh, those siege offenses. And there will also be some book changes because uh, a lot of units are getting buffed. Uh, some books need to be adjusted, I'm not gonna go over all of them, you can see all of them here, basically the uh, this one will show which buffs are, are already in place and this one will show you uh, what buffs they're getting. So most of these looks like effect hit rate, uh, this most likely refers to accuracy, uh, getting changed to something like effect resistance, so basically resistance, critical hit damage, this is weird, like light valkyrie needs crit damage? No. Uh, but yeah. That's pretty much it for the balance patch that's coming to Korea. This should come to Global or NA probably within a few weeks, a good month. So yeah, it should be pretty interesting. A lot of light and dark nap 5s getting buffed. Build up your dark vagabond are gonna be super useful. And yeah, peace.